So Google I.O. just happened last week and Google released a ton of cool products, amongst which was a new version for Flutter 3.22. This update brings a lot of cool changes to the Flutter framework and we're going to be taking a look at them in this video. Throughout this video, I am going to be referencing a couple of articles, namely this Medium article by Kevin, as well as a LinkedIn post by Asin Khan to kind of guide you guys through what's actually changed within Flutter with this new version that's being introduced. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the actual integration of WebAssembly within Flutter. For those of you that do not know what WebAssembly is, I'll give you a quick intro to it. WebAssembly is basically a type of binary code that can be run in any modern browser, and it enables us to write code in multiple different languages and then run it on a browser at near native speed. And what WebAssembly basically allows us to do is write the code or the logic for our application with languages that we use, such as C, C++, Rust, and other things like that. And then when we ship our application to production, the final form of our application can have a WASM binary bundled with it. And what happens is that, that when this application is delivered to the user's browser, the browser takes this WASM binary and then basically decodes it, then transforms that into machine code and then runs that machine code on the actual machine's processor. And this enables us to create lightning fast websites which run at near native speed, as this article mentions. Just as a side note, links to all of the resources that I mentioned within this video can be found in the description below. So feel free to take a look at it if you're confused at any point. So with Wasm now being introduced, what can we do? Well, basically it's going to allow us to improve the actual speed for our Flutter applications, both in terms of the graphics that the users see, as well as the actual performance of the code that's running our business logic. And a great example of this is the actual example that's provided by the Flutter team. And I'll leave a link down to this in the description below as well. So if you access this website with an actual browser that has capabilities for WebAssembly, you are going to see that how smooth this website works on the web and how smoothly all of these graphics are being rendered at at least 60 hertz or above. And this is the Wondrous app for those of you who are wondering and it's running natively on the web. And now with Wasm being available on the stable channel with the release of Flutter version 3.22, I believe we now as Flutter developers have a great foundation upon which we can build stunning web applications the same way we do these mobile apps and desktop apps using Flutter without the concern of degraded performance or Flutter not being the first choice when it comes to building web apps. Another feature that I'm really stoked about is the inclusion of the Vertex AI within the Firebase Dart SDK. And what this basically means is now if you have Flutter applications that you're planning to build or Flutter applications that you already have that are using Firebase, now they are going to be able to utilize the Gemini API within the actual Firebase backend as a service. And you'll be able to use the full capabilities of the Gemini API to create stunning applications using the power of AI or whatever other tools are at your disposal. And one thing that I really like about this update is that Google has ensured that the actual SDK works with Firebase app checking. And this is going to allow us to mitigate issues such as fraudulent API calls or billing issues and things like that, because the app check server proxy is going to make sure that the requests that come from our device or from our app are actually coming from our app and not a third party, and then only relay them to the actual Vertex AI or Gemini app that we have linked to our actual Firebase application. Another feature that I'm excited to see come to fruition is the fact that now Impeller's Vulkan backend for Android is feature complete. So what this basically means is that the Impeller engine, which is used by Flutter to render its UI, is now feature complete on Android as well. And this brings huge performance gains to the actual framework. So to give you an example of this, I'm going to be showing you guys the actual demo that the actual Flutter team provides us. And as you can see that for blur based animations, we get almost a 2x increase in the performance. And this is not the only thing. If you scroll down a little bit more in the article, you can see that now Impeller on both iOS and Android has moved to a new rendering strategy, which is called stencil then cover. And to put it in the simplest of terms, this new rendering strategy is much more efficient than the previous one that was being used by the impeller engine. And this again is going to allow us to run our applications at much higher frame rates with much less CPU and GPU resources. So to take a look at that, you can see that there's an example that the actual Flutter team gives us. And you can see that both of these apps are running in actual Lotte animation, but the app on the left side is using the previous rendering technique, while the app on the right side is using the new rendering technique. And as you can see that the performance gain is substantial. Our animations are looking much smoother. They are running much faster. And if you take a look at the description at the bottom, you can see that it says that previous when using the old rendering strategy, it was taking 64 
milliseconds to render each frame for the latte animation. But now with the new rendering strategy, which is stencil then cover, the actual efficiency has been increased by 10x. So now the actual raster times are 10x faster. Besides these three major things that I've discussed, there are a lot of small changes that have happened to the framework. This includes some deprecated changes and a whole host of other things. If you want access to the complete write-up, then I have links to all of the articles that I mentioned down in the description below. But if you do not have the time to actually go through the complete Medium article that you see here, then another great resource is the LinkedIn article by Asin, where he basically summarizes in one or two sentences all of the changes that had happened to flutter with the version 3.22 and what each of these entail i've already discussed in detail what the major ones are and how they're going to improve our developer experience while it comes to working with flutter but if you want to take a look at the nitty-gritty details and see everything that changed then this is another excellent resource as well so with this new version of flutter 3.22 now released i am really happy to see the direction that the actual flutter development team has taken and all of the changes that have happened to the flutter framework i believe now is a great time to actually get into the Flutter framework and start building awesome applications with it because companies all over the world are rapidly adopting this new cross-platform framework. And now, as Flutter has always promised, it's going to allow us to create stunning web applications the same way it's allowed us to create stunning desktop and mobile applications. So with that, that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed and learned a thing or two about the new changes that have happened to Flutter with version 3.22's introduction. As always, if you enjoyed the video, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I release a new video. And stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.